Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to this Net at Work quick tip video. Uh, this video will be a continuation of our previous video that touched on attributes and adding those as uh, user defined fields within Acumatica with no customizations. Uh, but today we'll be taking it a step further, actually diving into customization projects, finding the fields we want to add, setting that up, publishing that project, and giving you a better understanding of the different uh, different abilities of these customization projects and how they can help uh, get this custom product or Acumatica to the look that you are looking for for you or your customer. So the first thing we're going to be doing here is heading over to the customization project screen. Um, that is under uh, the uh, more options here, customization and then customization projects. And then on this screen you'll get a gauge of what is currently active uh, with customizations that are applied to your system what screens are they um, touching on the system and as well another place you can see of what uh, different add-ons are added to Acumatica if you go to the tools and about and you can see here even when logging in we have this data access class schema browser which we can see it's published up here and then we also have uh, the manufacturing dot 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 so this will go in depth if you're logging in Acumatica as well it will show that there and that's another screen uh, another place you can find it on your screen you're probably going to see nothing it's going to be blank that's generally how it comes out of the box and uh, these customization projects uh, there's a lot of them but they all do a specific thing so you can see here we have descriptions for this PO status we can see the screen name and to figure out the screen names um, you would actually learn about those in the URL above. You can even click in on these as well, choose to publish this to this uh, exact uh, branch and tenant, or we can do to multiple tenants as well from the screen. Now when you're publishing projects, just keep in mind, if you're publishing it on multiple tenants and then you jump into another tenant and go into those customization projects, it's not always the case that it will show up. Sometimes it will just stay blank, even though customization is there. Don't worry, uh, just a good rule of thumb is to remember exactly where you, uh, where you applied those customizations uh, originally from and go to that screen every time so this way you're not getting in this weird phase of you have it published on some on one tenant and then you have uh, one branch and then another branch and then they're kind of overlapping and it's confusing and things aren't working. Just stay within one uh, to keep it simple and if you have to go to two, just be very aware of what you've already published. The next thing we're going to do um, from the screen uh, is actually uh, create one, but instead of creating a customization project, to keep it really simple and straightforward, the best thing for, uh, that I always do is go over to where you want to add that new user defined field. So in this case, I'm going to add a SCAC code, an SCAC code, to a uh, ship option, so this way that when a uh, client um, of mine or a customer is uh, purchasing something and I uh, set up the shipment this way I can have that code attached to my bill of lading uh, when that's being printed out so the first place I'm going to go over is to my sales orders I'm going to make sure uh, that the view uh, show all option is enabled we're going to go to ship via codes as well you can always type it in the search bar and then in here I'm going to click on uh, just FedEx ground it doesn't really matter in this case because they're all the same screen. Uh, we just need to have the screen up on our uh, displaying. The next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to s kind of figure out where we want to add this SCAC code. So I kind of want to put it uh, underneath this freight expense sub. Keep it really uh, straightforward on the main landing page that they click on here. The client can add it or um, can add it to their Acumatica and attach that to the FedEx ground. Now keep in mind when you add these user defined fields, just like the attributes, they're going to have their own uh, data. It's going to be stored within this new field. So things are not going to get lost. You can actually call that in your reports. It's super uh, easy and you can inspect element just like it was already in the system. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit Control and Alt, which is that question that you see on my mouse. Or you can go to Tools in our Customization and then Inspect Element, same thing. Um, and then also I wanted to point out, you can see here, select project, edit project, manage customizations. So if you hit edit project, this will actually allow you to open a project on this screen. Now, I want to make sure that things are uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so for this example, I'm going to show you a little trip just to jump right into where you can add it and publish it. So we're going to do that inspect element. 
now that we see the fields we're going to go into uh, hit this customize button or another button you can also hit is uh, customize data fields as well because this is a data field and now it's going to prompt us to select a customization project so the customization projects that this is referring to are the projects that we see on this customization project screen so this is kind of what is going to contain all the different modifications in this one package so generally speaking you can see some of these have multiple different screens they attach the manufacturing obviously it's a big, it's a bundle um, it's an add-on this a lot of these have individual screens so if you are publishing a customization project on a screen you cannot have a similar uh, I have another customization project affecting that same screen so one customization project per screen and you can kind of see here I have two uh, two customizations on here just running some tests just to confirm that uh, the other day because I was playing around with it just to see if I could do that um, because I had an additional add-on with the system and I wanted to see if I can add a different customization and unfortunately you cannot so make sure that all your customizations if they are gonna be uh, if you want to add another one to that uh, screen and some other project is already using it go into that project and modify it there and make sure you always back it up just in case something does go uh, askew so after we uh, have our project we're gonna hit new we're going to do uh, SCAC because that's just what we're gonna name this project we're gonna hit OK um, and just do it one here um, or SCAC one just for a test we're gonna hit OK and now you'll notice we're back in the uh, original screen before we created that project and we just have to choose to select it we have the option to drop down uh, bring the drop down for all the different projects and we're going to hit OK now it's going to bring up a pop-up window and this pop-up window is going to display all the different fields so the best thing to do is if you don't have two screens make sure you just leave this as a smaller window and expand it a little uh, I'm a very visual person so I like to be able to see kind of the screen I'm modifying and then you can just kind of put things two and two together so we see calendar calendar carrier carrier so we can kind of get a gauge that um, if we we're just looking at these that this is the exact screen that we just were uh, we just were inspecting right now and then if you look above you can see here we have freight rates we have packages we have advanced fulfillment and if, you've no, if you look, you can see packages refer to this tab right here. And then advanced fulfillment of, does this tab right here. So don't feel, uh, be afraid. You can open these up and look around and see kind of all the different options here. If we go into this screen and we actually click back on here and go to packages, you can see looking at this, we have uh, box ID, description. So very, um, it's very similar to what we're seeing on the screen of where we can be adding information. So we're going to go back here, we're going to go back to this uh, customization project, and we're going to add the SCAT code. So two things are going to happen. We're going to be adding the field. We have to actually create it within the system, and then we're also going to have to publish the system. So right now, if you are doing this step-by-step, -step, trying to add this to your system, and somebody's logged in, and this is a live system, uh, please be aware that you, cannot, you should not complete this, because if anyone's doing anything in the system, it will kick everyone out. So it's best to do this on a test system, or wait until everyone's logged out and you're on a different tenant but I would always highly suggest testing this on a test system first just in case things go wrong you can always erase that system and reset it versus a live system so the first thing we're gonna do here is create the actual field so I'm gonna bring this out because uh, I've been um, a little more familiar with this but we have main properties layout properties attributes events add control there's add controls here add data fields and then view the ASPX so on this screen right here uh, the add controls these are different controls you can add in different uh, things we're not going to cover this because we're just keeping this really short and uh, to the point of adding that custom field because that's the goal here and the first thing we want to do here is scroll down to see if that field even does exist these are all the fields that are up uh, in the system that could be if you're adding an add-on sometimes they could already be here uh, like true commerce or other uh, plugins they sometimes uh, hide things in here if you want to bring that information up um, in this case since we're adding a SCAT code we're gonna hit new field we're gonna type in SCAC now just to be cautious here uh, don't put any uh, Roman uh, like shift explanation point all that uh, all those different characters keep things uh, just letters or numbers 
and then hit tab, you'll see here that the text will actually change to USR SCAC. USR is uh, set aside for uh, custom fields that we're adding, so the system will always add USR beforehand. The display name is where we can then change it to show and display in the system how we want the customer or client to see. So I'm going to do SCAC number here with a pound sign. Um, we're going to leave the uh, DB table column the same and the data type are the different options. So we have a string of characters, an integer, a boolean, a yes or no, a decimal, date time, and so on. And the date time is really cool because when you press that, it'll give you the date drop down. You can kind of choose the date, super, uh, super interactive and uh, makes things easier for choosing the time. Um, we want to do a string for this and then the length refers to how long this code will be. So generally SCAT codes uh, between four to six. Um, to be safe, I'll just do eight in this case. Um, and this is how many uh, characters we can put in here. We're going to hit OK. You'll notice the screen doesn't really change, but if you scroll down, you'll see the user SCAC code that we just made. Now, looking at this, you'll see there's an explanation point, and that's because we have to publish it. So we have to do two steps, which is first publish this modification. So we're going to do that right now. And then once it's published, then that new uh, field is now recognized in the system and then we can choose to then add it to the left side over here. So give this a couple seconds. It will go through a bunch of different uh, directories and it's going to build and get everything set up. Not too much uh, to look in here for just the average user, but if you do run into an error, it's definitely good to kind of get a look in here and see kind of what's throwing the code to give you uh, to kind of point you in the right direction. Now once it says website updated, well, uh, that means we're good to go. We're going to hit the X here. And just to be safe, we're going to hit the reload button and give it a second. And sometimes in this case, and I did this on purpose because I want to show you uh, what happens when you reload this. It's going to kick you out of the screen. Don't worry. Uh, there's two options you can do, which is go back in the same way we originally went to that screen, which is inspect element here. Or you can see the screens show up right here under screens this is the screen we're modifying um, and then you can kind of break this down here we have details which is where we were under the column and then we're back where we started originally but now we can add the different uh, the additional fields so we're gonna go to add data fields and if this is the case and it loads we're gonna have to click one of these so you can see playing around and and sometimes things get a little wonky in the customization uh, uh, project editor. Sometimes it does come back, sometimes it won't. See, I just had to click on here. Once we're in column, let's scroll down here and we're going to actually check the user SCAC number. And we're going to hit save. Then you'll notice the number showed up, uh, well, the new field showed up here. Um, but I wanted to show in the bottom. So your first thing, can I just drag this down and put it on the bottom? and sometimes it does work uh, generally it won't it's, it's a little finicky you can bring it to the bottom but you can't bring it all the way to the, like almost bottom but not all the way to the bottom in this case you just have to drag the previous one above and then this is the order that it will display in we're gonna hit save again and then we're gonna publish this project so that previous publish we did actually did will it resets the whole uh, system Acumatic actually restarts it um, and it will refresh the page on your screen. Um, I didn't actually minimize this window to show you that, but it does do that in the background. We'll see it again in this example as we publish it again. Uh, but this time, we will see the actual code show up, the SCAT code show up down here, because right now it's not showing up uh, because we didn't publish it uh, with it added uh, just until now. So it says website updated. This means that it's been applied. We can close this. Uh, we can even close that customization project here and we can just give the page a refresh. And you'll see it takes an extra second because it's actually having to recache the whole page and we have our SCAT code right here. And then we can see we made it eight characters so one two three four five six seven eight 
and once we go to 9 it won't let me press anything and that's because we chose the length on that previous menu now if you do create this field just a rule of thumb um, and you choose to expand it down the road you cannot you actually have to recreate it and all that data in that field can't is is gonna have to be manually transferred over so make sure if you're questionable if you add additional need additional characters uh, down the road just add them now to be safe because you can't actually easily expand them Thanks guys for tuning into this net at work quick tip video if you have any questions uh, Please feel free to email me on the screens email uh, you see right now um, I'm more than happy to help demo data is great You can see I've been playing around with it if you have any questions on how to install that demo data Don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to help here at net at work uh, Whether it's a small or a big issue and thanks again guys catch you in the next one